Welcome to Inventor Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Inventor Camp Professor, and in this lesson we'll be doing part two of creating chain geometries. What I'd like to do now is go into our chains and create chains automatically around the part itself instead of picking each individual en entity as we go around. Picking each entity as we go around uh, in parts that are large will take a long time and actually be frustrating. So we have the options of creating chains automatically. We have the option here called now Auto General and Auto Constant Z. Auto General simply means that if I choose a geometry, so an element such as this one here, what it tells me to do is to pick just the next entity to give it direction. Say I can pick this entity over here. Now the problem with auto general in this particular case is that since I'm working on a part, you'll note that when it gets here it doesn't know what to do. It can continue either this way or that way. So it highlights those two um, entities and I just choose which entity I want. So I'll choose this entity. But now the problem is the same thing will happen as I'm going around. So for uh, at working on a part, this is not necessarily the best solution. Auto general is good if you're working on a sketch, but not necessarily on a part itself. So instead of choosing auto general, we have the option now of choosing auto constant Z. By choosing auto constant Z, what will happen is we'll automatically look only on the elements, on the entities that are on that Z level. It will not look at this level over here, or this entity over there, or anyone around. Only on the entities on that Z level. If I click onto it, as I will do now, you'll note that it automatically f creates the chain on that entire level. All I have to do is simply accept it. Now let's say I want to create a chain, but the chain that I want to create, I want to create it automatically, but not all the way around. I want to create it only up until a specific point. So what I can do now is simply say auto to point, and I'll choose auto constant Z. Now let's say if I choose this entity over here and this time I want to reverse the direction so I'll click on reverse or just simply click on this entity over here. Now it's asking me pick the vertex. In other words the end of the chain. Where do I want the chain to end? So I simply say I want the chain to end at this point over here. The chain will now be created automatically but only up until that point. That's by using the option of auto to point. Now we have another option here called multi-chain. What multi-chain is good for is for something like this pocket as you see here. Instead of choosing each individual chain, and in this particular case since I have an outside chain over here, this pocket, and I have the islands in between, the rule is that the first chain must be on the outside and the following chains must be the inside chains. The island chains are within that boundary. So instead of choosing each one of these geometries, these chains separately, I can go in to multi-chain, simply click on the floor of the pocket, and it will automatically build chains when I click on build chains as shown over here. And you'll note that the order is also correct. Let's just take a look at the top view. My first one being the outside and my second and third one being on the inside. You'll also note that when I click or highlight the chain list over here, that particular chain will be enhanced. Click on that one, chain 2 is enhanced, and so on and so forth. 
Now, before I finish, there are certain rules I'd like to point out. Creating a, a chain geometry for a profile, I can use a chain that's either open or closed. By open means it can be from one end to another without having a complete loop, or a closed one. Creating a chain for a pocket must be the chains itself must be closed. The same thing is for creating a chain within 3D operations for boundary purposes. They must be closed. Another rule that we should know that the chain itself does not determine the depth of the cut. I can have a chain, if I want, go from around the part, such as I'll choose this chain this element over here and if I were to go and pick and say close corners and turn the part around and pick this element over here you'll note the chain will go down like that but this does not determine the depth of the cut this is just a simple border and nothing else thank you for joining us on Inventor Care and Professor take care and have a nice day